Hello everyone, this is Super Galaxy Sam here, and real quick, I need to post this notification. <laughs> wow, I have the hiccups. Give me one second. Uh, today we are playing Pokemon Scarlet. Hello Foxan TV, how are you? Welcome to the stream. That's good to hear. I, I'm taking the smiley face means you're doing good. I will start up the game in just a moment. I just need to post this one notification and we can get started. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> there goes one of my chickens. They sneezed. That's good to know. All right, where's where did I put the controller? I quickly took some photo Polaroid photos, and oh, there's the controller. And my desk is cluttered. Not me being here at seven p.m. sharp. Hey, you're just in time then. Uh, we're playing as one of my original characters, Julian, in this game. And uh, I had him start out with Fue Coco, so. We gotta go find Nimona, which is easy, because she's over there. Here we go. It's a fun game. I like the storyline. <laughs> it was 6.59 and I rushed on Twitch. <laughs> You're good. You're good. How are you doing, CRK? I actually don't have an updated reference sheet of Julian, what he typically looks like. Um, if I get the time, I'll actually make a good proper reference sheet for him. But normally in his own universe, Julian is a YouTuber who, like, ends up getting basically isekai into another realm for some time and, um, ends up having to basically be a paladin. Oh, nice! Congrats. Congrats on getting White Lily. So, um, his Pokemon AU version is like, he's from, his Pokemon AU version would be he's from the Ore region, aka the region where, like, Pokemon Coliseum XD takes place, because in, uh, canon, he's from Arizona. So, yeah, for the Pokemon version, he's from the Ore region, and he kind of gets isekai I guess, back in time. Though I have yet to play Pokemon Arceus Legends. Um, but he would probably get isekai to, like, ancient Galar region instead. And he's of uh, Cuban-American descent. Indeed, Flamigo. I remember when uh, Whispers of a new Pokemon game was coming out, and this was before Scarlet and Violet were announced, and they're like, oh yeah, we're there's been reports that the dev team has uh, visited um, not Sacramento, California, but like Southern California, at least, one of the Santas. And I was like, oh, are they gonna finally make a game in California? And uh, turns out, no, they were visiting this area, but They were going to make a game on Spain. 
Gastrogon are cute when they're little. Yeah, they are. And yeah, that's true about Pokemon designs. Apparently their design philosophy is like they try to ensure not uh, one Pokemon ever looks too cool. So even like the cool Pokemon will have something goofy or awkward about their design. Just to balance it out. Yes. I forgot. Oh, Shell. Shellin, Shelter. It's been a while. Yeah. What if I don't want to catch the Lechonk? It's been a while. <sighs> Who did they bully? Chickens, what are you doing? I'm gonna turn off the light so you calm down. Okay, the chicken should hopefully mellow out. <laughs> okay, they want me to catch the Pokemon. All right. Oh my God, auto mod, stop that. I might, Loki, I'm gonna, I might, uh, did the burp spite you? No, they were just being bullies to each other. Because chicken drama is like that. Also, I'm probably going to turn off auto mod because I haven't been satisfied with how it's been uh, detecting things lately. Because it's been detecting or like filtering a lot of people's comments that aren't like violent or aggressive or sexual in the slightest as such. And I, I haven't been too happy about that. Yeah, like, what really made me very unimpressed with it was uh, one time someone made a very benign comment, uh, including the term, terminal, including the word lesbians, and it flagged lesbians as sexual, and I was like, no, that is really not okay. That is not okay in the fucking slightest. I'm not at all happy with that. Uh, decision for auto mod. Yeah, it's not. And so I was pretty pissed about that. So I'm probably gonna, like, make an announcement. When I make my announcements on Discord, I'm probably gonna mention I'm gonna turn off auto mod because uh, that and like it constantly registering the word bite as like inappropriate terms is kind of the last straw for me well no not kind of it is the last straw for me I don't think that's okay Yeah, it keeps censoring that, and it's like, you know, it needs to stop that. It's probably because it, like, is thinking of bite being used in, like, a kink term or something, and it's like... It's not checking for what the context of the word is being used for. Like that's that's the most safer way, work way I can guess or state my guess of what it think. Why is uh, Coridon jittering? Okay, um, that's the most benign and safest way I can guess why it keeps marking that term as such. 
Yeah. It's not taking into account the full context. And since it's like a bot, it's just learning from whatever, you know, people think, like whatever general society thinks the word's being used for or whatever, or stereotypes or something. That's my guess where it's pulling these ideas of what's inherently a bad word or not for Automod. Also, my brain instantly read that as sandwich instead of sandwich, thanks to Team Fortress 2. Chicken soap opera sound interesting. Chicken drama is something else. It's, it's basically like Mean Girls, but bird form. Oh my god, there's so many textures I do not feel okay seeing <laughs> through <laughs> the computer screen. So I used to play Scarlet on a big uh, TV screen. So I would not see things like the textures on Coridon like this clear um, compared to now where I have a game capture and I can see all these clear details. The fact that they textured a Coridon to be feathered like this, I'm not okay with that. I get that he's feathered, but the fact that the feathers just look plastered on. What the bot thinks I'm gonna thinks I'm gonna bite you. What we say, chicken bite you, exactly. Actually I'm gonna see if I can turn it off right now. I I don't like Automod. Where is Automod feature? Save. Okay, Automod should now be off. Yeah! Fair enough. I couldn't see the texture on the TV screen. It just looks smooth. So I thought Coridon was like feathers and scales. And Automod should now be off. And if it's not off this stream, despite turning it off, it will be off next stream. So the game makes it so you can't walk faster than Coridon or Maridon. I'm trying to decide what kind of roster or team he should Julian should have in this game. Cause uh his typical lore is he's a farmer boy turned YouTuber. Or not a farmer boy, but like a r ranch boy. He grew up on a small ranch. Out in the middle of the desert, so In uh, Shield, I had his team be where uh, he had uh, Mudsdale, um, I believe Grookey, that became Rillaboom. He had uh, Gyarados and Lucario. Yeah. <laughs> I might give him a uh, Hound Hour because I know Hound Doom is sometimes used by like ranch hands within the Pokemon universe. 
But he already has a fire type. He has Fue Coco. I know for his uh, Pokemon self, because I thought a little bit about like his Pokemon version, um, his starter would actually be uh, Mudbrain. But of course, you don't have that option within the main series games. But, yeah, his canonical starter is Mudbray. And, um, I think, if I remember right, Riolu, but definitely Mudbray. Riolu, or like Lucario, he would get when he travels back in time. Yeah, I love the new starters in this game. I think the tide matchups and everything for them are really good. Not gonna lie, I think the sol the starters for the last three generations have been pretty solid. Uh, for like Sun Moon, Sword Shield, and then Scarlet Violet have been really good. Oh, Quaxley looks fun. Oh yeah, everyone thought he was going to evolve into a pirate or something. A pirate or a sea captain. But instead he kind of like evolves into one of the most very Brazilian Pokemon ever. He does, he looks real cool. I almost thought of giving Julian a uh, Quaxley, but I felt maybe uh, Fue Coco would fit him better. Though, if, like, one of the starters was very blatantly, like, Cuban or Cuban-American-inspired, I would have chosen that starter instead. Yeah, they do. The, um... I don't know if he played a role in Scarlet and Violet's art direction, but I know for uh, Sword and Shield, the lead art director, um, Brandon Turner, he was the one who created Shadow Lugia for Pokemon uh, Gale of Darkness. I 
I love. I have Mio Escarada as a uh, my main file starter. Arvin is such a good boy. I love his character. I'll also, probably like early February or so, I'm probably gonna look towards getting the DLC. Yeah, he's so good. I love his character. I've seen some uh, really good cosplays of him on like TikTok compilations on YouTube. There's a. I wish I could find the video, but there's like one TikTok cosplay compilation that features an Arvin cosplayer with a. a no, it's just the Arvin cosplayer, but like, he's like listening to his iPod or something like that, and suddenly the music changes, and he's like, wait a minute, uh, I'm gonna butcher his name, uh, Giacomo, uh, Giacom G <laughs> it's such an Italian name, but, uh, the dark type member of Team Star, He really does. Yes, him. I'm okay ish at pronouncing like Spanish names, but like Italian names? No, I, I can't. Or anything that's very Italian-esque, I struggle with. You're good. His name is so difficult to pronounce. For, uh... And spell. Like, it's such a hard name. But I know I'll probably look into getting, because I, I found, so like TODR, I filed my taxes just today, because my W-2 form came in, aka just typical adult stuff, and um, I am expected to get like back money for my tax returns. So I might use it as an opportunity to actually get the DLC for this game and also get uh, Pokemon Legends. But since uh, getting a like monthly um, Nintendo Online Pass is pretty cheap, I'll probably get it next week, so if anyone wants to try battling uh, this file or like interacting with this file next week, not next week, not next week, two weeks from now, my bad, two weeks from now, I'll try having that going.
Why am I jumping to next week? It's not, it's not already next week already. I have to, I just got paid this week, so it's gonna be two weeks. But it already feels like next week, so. I think something fun to do for like logging Julian's adventures for this game is I'll probably like put together like his own little summary for why he's in this region. Chances are it's so he wants so he can like attend school. Cause uh his canonical self is like he grew up on a family ranch in the middle of the desert and he was like not really uh, given an opportunity to attend school. So, for his pokey self, it would be like the same thing. So, it's possible that he decides to, um, attend this school as like a older teen, young adult, because he's like, uh, 19, 20-ish. To basically get the education that he was kind of like not given the opportunity to get earlier. So. Let's see here. Oh, no, I don't want to run into another Lee Chong. Go away. Wait, what's that creature over there? I can't tell if it's a deerling. Oh, yes, it is. I personally enjoy using Sauce Buck. I was not expecting to get Deerling this early, but you know what? I will take it. No. How? Oh yeah, sand attack. Look at this little... I forgot its name. The yarn spider. There's so many Pokemon now. There's over a thousand. Yes, that is correct. They are. And there's implications or at least a theory that, uh, no, I didn't want to faint it. There's at least implications or a theory that, um, 
Chairman Rose is uh, Penny's uncle. Because it's basically implied or suggested that, um, that, um, what's his name? Peony is, uh, is, uh, Penny's father. Yes. It's it's heavily uh, suggested that Peony is Penny's father. And um, if you look at Peony's like trainer card, he has his daughter and it shows his wife. And his wife is light skinned and he is very dark skinned but then the daughter is a uh, like a mix of the two skin tones and then penny just happens to be uh it's believe that penny is ha happens to be the daughter that takes more after uh her mom in terms of skin tone so that would make uh penny mixed race which is pretty cool. But yeah, that would basically be why she looks nothing like Peony. Yeah. I'm I'm also from a mixed race family and like one of my parents is very dark skinned, just like Peony. So, from first glance, people wouldn't know that the two of us are related. So, it's nice to see that representation in, like, Pokemon. It was like, yes! All the time, fair enough. Well, to be fair, it's also like something that they kind of dropped in on the DLC. Like the heavy implications, you wouldn't know unless someone who played the DLC told you, or you like uh, played the DLC yourself. What was it? It was... Oh, yeah. You. I want to catch this one. Give me. Because this is... I know Pikachu and right The Pikachu family is used by, like, ranch uh, trainers in the Pokemon verse. And also, I know I had, like, thought about his what kind of Pokemon he typically uses and, like, the common types of Pokemon Julian prefers for his Pokemon counterpart is uh, ground, steel, rock, and electric. Like, those are his go-to types. And also in uh, 
one region for some time he was also um a like ground or like rock type gym leader Yeah. Now, it's been a while since I've played Pokemon Scarlet, so I'm like, some of this stuff is like completely new to me in a way. Like, new in a refreshed way. And I was like, I don't recall this or this. Like, when was Deerling this early in the game. Same thing with Bonsley. I don't recall Bonsley being this early. Or maybe I didn't like venture around enough earlier. Or maybe it's something they've added in uh, updates. Yeah, same. I don't either. And I'm like, wow, that's interesting. Oh shit, yeah. So it's interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if it's just very rare or if it's literally something they've added since the DLC. Cause I know I know the uh, game has gone through like some patch updates. So it's totally possible to patch in new Pokemon or patch in new areas Pokemon can spawn in. I, I'm so lucky I did not get on launch. I'm so fucking glad I didn't. I heard how awful it was on launch and I was like, okay, I'm gonna hold off. I caved, um, on getting it when Walking Awake was a thing. I was like, alright, I'm getting Walking Awake. I'm sorry, but my preference for dinosaurs is too strong. Yes! Oh my god, there were so many bugs. And apparently there was like a graphical error. I don't know if it ever got patched out, but like Flami two of the Flamigos on like the Flamigo uh, splash screen for like the deck entry has it where two of the Flamigos on the right. I learned this through a, a Loxton video. Two of the Flamigos on the right have two sets of wings instead of one. Yeah. It was a thing. How do I get over there? Nope. Let me fall. Boink. I do like the get how the game accounts for that. The whole... This... I think it's cool. No. Yeah, they do. It's so funky. 
I'm glad that they uh, made a statement earlier in the year where they're like, okay, we re recognize that we fucked up and have been working our employees too hard. So we'll go ahead and start like not rushing them. So the hopes are um, they'll actually take that and they'll actually commit to that and actually allow there to be a more better pace on release. Yes, Fido. Go, Fleet Coco. There's the little Fido Pokemon right there. I am gonna switch with them. Okay, I'm gonna let, let's see here, Pommy. Holy shit, already? Pommy, you're not that water worn out. Go fight! Okay, fine. Alright, I'm gonna continue on with the journey. Got my Pokemon all healed up. Good for you, child. I will say, if you play this game through a capture card, it does lag a little bit more than uh, if you play on the TV. It's like, wow, you can see more of the pretty graphics, but also, oh my god, the lag is is very evident. Yes. I remember seeing videos obsessing over the little guy. Yeah, I remember seeing those videos too. People were like crazy for Lot Fido and Lechonk. I think I've also kind of sort of played it out of order. I just did it whatever I wanted. I like that you could like really roam around. Check summary. Oh, that's cool. I think for me it was Penny and then Arvin.
All right. Use a round again. There we go. Yeah, I would do something kind of similar. I can't remember what, because it's been like two years. Two or three years now. <laughs> no, it's been like two years. You. Miss Agoza to make some deliveries. Man, that reminds me of when, um, during the early start of the pandemic, for a brief while I uh, did Postmates. Yeah. That is correct. Yeah, I kind of, like, would stave off the gems as much as possible because I wasn't interested. But eventually got to a point where uh, my Pokemon started not listening to me. And I hadn't even traded to them. They just stopped listening to you. Pardon me, kind of wants to find a deal dearling again because, god damn it. That's fair, yeah. Also, man, giving Fue Coco around this early, holy shit. Oh, that's, that's still cool though. Ah, uh, yes, the move, the name of the move, the, the word that Twitch hates so much, bite. Yeah, the evolutions are real good. I like them. I have, um, I have a, like, vehicle sticker that I have yet to use. But it's, like, a holographic, um, vehicle sticker that, like, transitions between all the different evolutions. You mean in this game? I can tell you have very thick thighs, lady. 
Work those legs. Two. Work those legs. And it's like, yep. I I can see what you mean. That is a lot of hiking there. <laughs> And I'm saying this in an honest way. Yeah, I can see how. Because, like, they're brightly colored, most of them. And then this... The textures for this game are real... Wait, why am I using Ember? Um, are really bright. I don't like this. I don't have anything against. Wait, actually, I do. But if it knows a fire type move, that's an issue. Yeah. This. Th oh! Sword and Shield doesn't have the ability to see roaming Pokemon then. Roaming poke like roaming wild Pokemon wasn't a thing in Sword and Shield. Yeah, that's true. What's up here? I think I've been up here already. Oh, there's some uh, Star Arabias. That is correct. They won't. Oh, <laughs> I've gotten a uh, shiny rufflet to appear. I think I've only caught like one or two shinies in Scarlet. In Shield, I've caught a few. And then in older games, I've caught... Um, well, not so much as caught. I've hatched quite a few. At some point, I should, like, br probably bring them into, uh, the current game. What do I hear? I heard a... My first ever shiny was a shiny Poochiana that I didn't catch back when I was a kid. And then the first ever shiny I've ever caught was a shiny Quagsire in a Diamond's uh, Safari Zone. Ooh, a 
if only I could get that magic heart. Wait, no, I can. Oops. Oh, yeah, fun fact Julian canonically cannot swim. He was never taught how to swim, so. He actually doesn't know how to swim, so that's accurate. Um, I, oddly enough. No, I want to whistle back. No. Oh! Well, that works too! When I first got it, I asked my brother to ask. Oh, that's cool. It was just a different color. That's fair. Sometimes, yeah, some Pokemons have just different variants of colors. Shinies always like sparkle when you like encounter them in bad battle though so that's always like a guarantee way to tell and they also have like the little shiny marker next to their um profile when you cap when you capture them but that's always the worst is when you accidentally trade a pokemon you didn't mean to trade Oh, there's a Toxel nearby. That's what I was hearing. I nope. He fell into the water again. Yeah, there is. I'm gonna find the Toxel, cause I see that there's a Toxel in the area. I want- Julian, stop falling into the water! <laughs> Swimming lessons is not now! Where is that damn Toxel? Yeah, that's fair. I try to just keep my boxes organized. So I know, like, which ones to keep and which not. Can you go down here? I actually never checked that. Yes, you can, but... He's, it's not gonna let us. Oh, what's... No, I don't want any of those Pokemon, so... Yeah, no, when you start accumulating a lot of Pokemon, it helps to organize the boxes. I've been playing Pokemon for so many years that I just have a whole bunch. I also realize I should probably start importing the Pokemon from Pokemon Go, because... Currently, I don't really play that game much, just because my phone can't handle the game. So, I would like my Pokemon from it. Oh, nice. Oh, 
I want to find that Toxel, <laughs> but I don't think I can get the Toxel. It's out of reach. Yep, it do be like that. On my, uh, sun and moon, no, I only have sun version. On my sun version, I used to have just boxes upon boxes of eggs. To where, like, basically I would use Pokemon Bank just to make room. Yeah, it's like that. It do be like that. It took me a long while, but I had like a fuck ton of rock rock eggs. And the, all the rock rock eggs had like a chance of um, having five to six IVs and having one of the three abilities, which is like own tempo and then the other two typical abilities rock rock can have. And it took me forever to hatch all of the eggs. Yeah, that's fair. I want a uh, shiny Dusk Lichen Rock. I have yet to get one. Um, I think I have a shiny right, uh, Rock Ruff with own tempo. And then I have a standard shiny Rock Ruff that would evolve into uh, day or night form. No, I'm gonna keep them. I'm gonna keep them out. Yes, it's palmy, but it's like, uh, using its terraform. Honestly, since I'm playing this through a capture card, there's a lot of details you typically wouldn't see if you just played on a TV screen.
the uh, capture card makes the game be in like higher quality and everything. Like there's details on this game that I wouldn't have noticed without the capture card. That's fair. I won't lie. Um, I don't like how barren Mesa Gosa looks compared to, um, what was it, Castelia City and Pokemon Black and White and Black and White 2. You'll be surprised. After a while, you get used to just walking everywhere. Yeah. But yeah, I'm just like, I'm seeing this and I'm like, as someone who's like been to museums and also attended college and everything, this is kind of like the norm in a way. <laughs> or not like the norm, but like in like fancy places, yeah, it's kind of the norm. That's fair. Uh, the field of view on this. This poor person was flickering in and out. You are flickering. You are flickering out. Oh my god. Where does it want me to go? Oh, these are just little areas. Okay, I should go there. Yeah, they were they were about a ghost. They were like, I peace fades out of existence. Oh no, <laughs> what did you do? The way you phrased that, I'm like, oh no, something happened to them. Okay, fine, you want me to, to go to the tower, got it. Game wants me to go to the school. Why, child, why are you walking so funky? What? What is the walk? I'm sorry to poke fun at it, but also you are, you are walking quite interesting. I'm running. Yeah, I, the walk cycle. Is like that they're they're just straight up where did they go they were just straight up swinging their arms like whoop whoop hey are you taking selfie they were I am I am photobombing your selfie 
Hello, Rumnut. Welcome to the stream. How are you? I think for my Pokemon character, I started making them, and then I made them into. So oh no! <laughs> Oh, that's cool. Fair enough. Like and going Glaceon. Maybe maybe they're a Glaceon trainer. Maybe they're 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 an Ice type trainer. It's never too late to like refresh the lore. Here's Penny. Well, if you feel like doing it, definitely go out in there and do it. Have fun, have fun remaking the lore. Penny is great. Um, an artist I was following uh, made a whole bunch of pa backpacks that were like Penny's backpack. Like, they made uh, an Eevee one, and then they also made like Sylveon, Leafeon, um, I think Flareon. Yeah, I love the Eevee bag. I want one. I think they did. Or like they're considering it. I know there's like fan like fan made ones. Like the uh ones I mentioned. Fruit was so goofy looking. Oh, that honestly, that's an awesome idea. I want to, I. If they make it, I want to see in the um see them design it to be like that. Also, I find it funny how they don't know Penny's their leader. Kinda, sorta. Yeah. Yeah, they don't know that she's technically their leader. I will say one 
like world building thing I like about this game is it shows how ba battles are actually coordinated. Like we see in the anime and other media, but like here it's actually properly so shown. Whereas in like older games, they just go, yeah, just go fight them. Here you actually see them like making space and everything and going, yeah, this is how we coordinate battles. Yeah, they are. Like, there's definitely quite a few areas Scarlet and Violet flopped, but their rioting and world building's much stronger than the other games. Hello! Yes, I am here to see a shiny spawn into a wall. Hello, Molten. How are you? Welcome to the stream. You, you get to see our boy Julian and you get to learn about him as I play the game with him as the character. Um, later, I plan on having better, like proper details about him available on the Discord server. Both like his Pokemon AU and like his uh, original self. But some brief background on him for at least the Pokemon for brief background on him is like he's a YouTuber who grew up on a ranch out in the middle of Arizona's deserts and he's of Cuban American descent and the Pokemon uh, AU same thing he's still from like the desert and he grew up on a ranch um And like, he becomes a YouTuber and leaves his family ranch to basically escape his family. And then like, both in his original version and like the Pokemon one, he basically gets like, isekai to another realm. For Pokemon it would basically be some fantasy, high fantasy version of Guiler or like, old time medieval version. And he just gets warped to some fantasy iteration, like, high fantasy version. And has to, like, learn to be a paladin to defeat this, like, weird snake. Make him into the Floridian TikTok guy that just goes out there at night and yoinks critters joking. <laughs> Arizonian turned Floridian. He does have uh, relatives in Florida. And uh, his grandmother still lives in Cuba. Wait, what's that little icon? I need to... Oh my god. Nice. I had to ho hover over it to see the larger image. That That is a good emoji. Mr. Clavel, aka how are you doing fellow kids? Morton, have you played Pokemon Scarlet Violet yet? his chaos <laughs> yeah I won't lie his red orange I hate how vi how clear I can see the lagging students this is cursed that's fair well now you get to learn about Pokemon Scarlet 
and see it in nice high quality <laughs> because I am using a capture card and on my end I hate how this looks I do not like seeing all the like stop motion these students <laughs> <laughs> yes, the very, yeah, very non-laggy children. I hate this. I hate how, I hate how crisp and clear you can see that child's lagging. What the fuck? <laughs> so many people were like, thirsting over Jacques when he first came out on Twitter. That's me and my friends IRL! <laughs> They're all in sync too! I know, I hate that part! It's just a weird level of curse. You see them lagging and then you see Nimona and a few other kids and they're just like, I'm fine. This is fine. Nothing's wrong here. It's like, listen, we're not, we're not in a Rankin Bass cartoon. What is this? Because if it was, that'd be terrifying. Yeah, it would. It'd be like The Shining. Or not The Shining. What's the uh, movie, Children of the Cornfield? Loggy, laggy, and sing children. Yeah. He just wants an education. He did not grow up going to school. What do you actually want, Julian? I want to go to school. Oh, <laughs> fair. That sucks. Your your school just had that thick of a wall. The holy shit. What do you mean I can't have a phone data inside an historical building? Holy shit. Yeah. Or in my case, yes, you could have a uh, phone reception, but at the cost of your school being. Haunted and um, being haunted and being an old, like an old renovated mental asylum. <laughs> Literally, I, I w attended a college that before it was a college, it was a mental asylum that was abandoned and um. Yeah, there was ghosts. Oh shit. You and I, Molten. Yeah, our our schools used to be something very dark. <laughs> Horror game material. Um, let's put it this way. The president of the school at that time I was enrolled really loved the look the like prison the Spanish building but prison style esque look of the schools that they of the school that they kept it. <laughs> so, um yeah, that was a thing. And it didn't help that the freshman dorms that are now the sophomore dorms, because they changed what grade goes to the dorms for the section of the building. But, like, the dorms that I lived in, that were the fre- at the time were considered the freshman dorms. Um... Was, uh, where they kept some of the prisoners. Or not- technically not prisoners, but, like, residents. But it was basically, like, as a result, built, like... As you would expect from, like, prison cells and shit. It was, let's put it this way, when I was staying there for my first year of college, and that was the only year I stayed at the dorms in college, because 
It, what is that child doing? There's a child behind the pots. Prison dorm sound fitting. <laughs> God, yeah, I felt like that. But uh, basically, my dorm room was always very dark. Um, light at night wouldn't really penetrate it if you turned off all the lights. So if you wanted any sort of visible light, you better have some, some sort of night light or something visible within the room. <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he just wants school, guys. There's actually some parts of the college still that they haven't renovated that still have the old um, rooms that the residents would be in. And like, if you're, um, if you've ever like played Identity 5, I know Moten has, so Moten probably has heard this, but it's been a while. But um, in one of the character trailers for one of the Identity 5 characters uh, named Galati, she's from um, an asylum called White Sands Asylum. And so for her trailer, they showed her in one of those asylum rooms where they have the door and there's like a little shutter on the door that they can peek through. It was exactly like that at my, at my school. Oh shit. Yes, her name is Galatee. Like after uh, Pygmalion and Galatee. No, he just wants school, guys. <laughs> Man. That reminds me of, like, the one time I was, um, taking class. And this was on, like, the fourth story of one of the new buildings. So, very clearly, very far from the ground, where, unless you have... Super Am's hearing, you wouldn't hear a thing, or if someone's yelling. Um. Anyhow, it was super dark in the classroom because there was a lecture going on. And. I was in the far back of the classroom next to a window with no one else around me because I just wanted to make sure I didn't fall asleep in class so I made sure I stay, stayed in the brightest area of the room which was in the far back next to a window what the fuck is it? okay and uh... <laughs> who just randomly popped in? um... and as I was minding my own business my laptop like freaks out and starts using Google's voice search to um to start googling something and it goes sorry we couldn't find um we couldn't find what you were looking for and I'm like what the fuck because I didn't say anything the teacher's too far away to say anything to trigger Google. It just happened on its own. And then I hear something whisper, like, in my ear that I could not decipher to the side of the window. That was a thing.
Also, um, the bathrooms. There's always, like, even if you're not around, um, well, I mean, more of, even if you're the only one in the bathrooms, you constantly hear noise and everything. Like, someone flushing the toilet and washing their hands. So, I'm pretty sure the ghosts just constantly, like, use the restrooms in our school. Who's trying to... <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to Google some boober each, I guess. Yeah. <gasps> Pissing ghosts. That's a new one. I know. But that was a constant thing at my school, at, at the college I went to. The ghosts always using the toilets. Always. And only sometimes you would hear the water go off. Like, for the sinks. So really, they kept flushing the toilets without ever washing their hands. Louder to assert <laughs> dominance. Fuck. Who knows, maybe that's the advice I'll give to like newcomer students if I ever visit the college again. Cause I do occasionally go down to the college just cause there's um, a little town's village that has really good eats. Or <laughs> pop up like that buff Sonic picture, you know the one, yes. Damn, girl, you pissed loud as fuck. <laughs> Professor Sada, my brain goes burr. Exactly, Molten. Exactly. Sod is pretty.
Hang on, let me... I'll get a full body image of her, uh, character. Professor Sada. Just real quick. Uh, to get a better idea of what she looks like. This is her. This is what she looks like. <laughs> She's, uh, the professor you get in, uh, Scarlet. Um, for Violet, you get Professor Turo. Who people are also, like, thirsting over, but I don't see the appeal. I'm sorry. <laughs> he looks too much like the Giga Chad guy meme. So, those are the two professors. Pretty lady neuron activation! Yes, exactly! You know what I mean! <laughs> Me? I picked out Scarlet for Asada in the prehistoric Pokemon. There, I won't lie, when I first saw this dorm room, I'm like, this kid, these kids are fucking lucky. These students are fucking lucky. My dorm room didn't look like anything like this. As mentioned, it was a repurposed prison cell. So literally, it was a small square room that got dark as hell at night. There was only one window, and that window, like, only, uh faced like if you looked out the window it literally all you would see was the ground because like the dorm room it's like the dorm building itself was like um is like partially underground yeah they must be i mean it's a very high prestigious school I think there's a few adult students at uh, the academy. I know in the past for the Pokemon games, um, they do acknowledge sometimes adults like start school late or they return to school. So they'll like have uh, adult uh, background characters appear at the schools. So a lore, for the Pokemon lore-wise, Julian would probably attend this school as an adult because he just happens to have the money for it. Because <laughs> what happens to him in his general lore is like, he uh, becomes a YouTuber, but then like ends up kind of feeling very burnt out or washed out from being a YouTuber. And so tries to take his life in like a different direction. So his Pokemon self decides to like go ahead and become a gym leader. But then afterwards he decides to stop being a gym leader and like isn't exactly sure what to do. But he's financially well off, so... Um... Technically, he does need to, like, work another day in his life.
but he'd probably end up just using that time to actually attend a school like this one and, you know, get the education that he actually always wanted. Yes! He's a long-time character I've had for a while. And I, like, used to roleplay with him, too. Also, Moden, I feel like you'll probably like how goofy some of Clavel's in antics are later in the, the uh, Scarlet story. Basically, he pulls a how you do fellow kids meme. We love it, hip people! <laughs> oh, you OC! It's real funny. I know, the Megalovania is just like. Duh, 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 duh. Everyone, you get to start your adventure! Oh, so you mean disaster? No sands. Not disaster. Also, you'll find out Nimona is obsessed with battling. Like, I mean, hyper obsessed. Yeah, they all want your character to go do something. Are you supposed to be <laughs> like searching out awesome ingredients because I want to make sandwiches? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're all fighting over your main character.
I know that sounds silly, but it will make sense later. And also, uh, Arvin knows about Coridon. There we go. Now we're gonna go wander around and build up a Pokemon team. All right. There are mass outbreaks occurring. Um, where's these mass outbreaks? I mean, there's a Psyduck one. There's one over here. There's a few mass outbreaks. I'm not gonna go ta uh, go after the titans yet or the gems. I want to first build up a decent team. So as previously stated, Julian's preferred Pokemon are uh, Rock, Ground, Steel, and Electric types. So I'm probably going to have his team consist mostly of that. Or like Pokemon that would fit on a ranch, basically. That's kind of the theming. What's that, um, so there's, well, I think I might not be able to reach that, but I might be able to reach the poison.
I want to get up there. I want to get up there. Okay. So what's here? And there's like a Terra Pokemon over there. No, I don't want the surf skit. So what's this poison type? Oh, that's interesting. Pokemon Yi and Ha, the next gen, yes! I know how badly- I know people really want, um, a Pokemon game set in Australia. Yeah, I, I recall the current two, like, common requests for Pokemon region is, like, Australia and California. Knock them out, boy. <laughs> 